And it's a line drive to Key Lime Margarita. Yeah. What are you doing? Just watch. Whoa. Hi. Go for it. Thanks. What about me? Got you covered. Hey! Wow. Hey! Hey. Hey. Lefty O'Doul's drink mixes at these fine stores. What are you doing? I'm getting the girl back. With a live audience at the Gold Dust Lounge at Fisherman's Wharf, it's the Will and Willie Show, brought to you by Lefty O'Doul's Drink Mixes, your bartender in a bottle. I'm Paul Wells. I'm Will Dirt. And I'm Willie Brown. And our guest is Pete McCloskey. Pete McCloskey, the former congressman and a man who is a true American hero. Hey. Off camera and off mic, we were discussing his experience about exchanging views with people with whom he had been in confrontation with on the war world. Pete, why don't you tell the story of... Well, 63 years ago, we were running the ridges towards North Korea, in North Korea. And the North Koreans threw in a bunch of 16, 17-year-olds. These weren't the tough soldiers. These were kids that they'd impressed. And we killed a lot of them, and they killed a lot of us, and they fought like hell, and I wanted to go back 64 years later and congratulate these young kids that had fought so bravely. We had better weapons, we had air, artillery, tanks. So I meet this guy who is 17, machine gunner, and he can't speak uh, English, I can't speak Korean. We got a beautiful young interpreter and she interprets. And I t tell him I'd been wounded a couple of times, he'd been wounded three times, we embraced, we said we didn't want our grandkids to ever fight a war, and I said I was wounded in these two funny places, NG and Yangu, were you there? Oh yeah, he'd been there on the first day, so he was probably shooting at me. Huh. But every war, the soldiers 30, 40, 50 years later respect the ones they fought against, a lot of times more than our own generals. MacArthur was bad news. But the funny thing I was telling him, when I got elected to Congress in 67, there wasn't a law firm in San Francisco that didn't have a Marine that hadn't been in Guadalcanal or Iwo Jima. This was a Marine Corps town, all the leading citizens. And the Folger Coffee Company, when Peter Folger supported me, that got me elected. Uh, but when Peter <laughs> Folger was a major <coughs> in the Marine Corps, the war ended, the Japanese surrendered, and they sent him to a Japanese island where the Japanese didn't may not have known about the surrender, and he didn't know when he landed this funny little plane whether he might not get shot. So here's a battalion of Japanese lined up with their sabers, and a guy steps forward with a saber and salutes him. He says, Major Folger. I worked in your coffee company in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> and I intended to take it over. <laughs> yeah, Can I that. have my job back? He, a Chinese guy owns it now, I think. <laughs> now, you recently put out a book about the Kore your Korean War experiences. Okay. Yeah, about the guys in my company. I had a lot of things to say about Let's have law rather than war. I don't, I, make love not war is kind of my philosophy. Every guy I know who's been in combat and been shot at doesn't want any more war. The guys that want wars are the Cheneys and the Rumsfelds, never been shot at, dodged a draft when they were young. Combat is a kind of a learning experience. Uh, you know, Pete, uh, our friend Lee Housekeeper reminded me during the break uh, that you did something that is incredibly unique. The late Shirley Temple, for all of you out there, mm -hmm. the late Shirley Temple was his first opponent for the Republican primary for Congress. And they ended up writing a book about this man who beat the good ship Lollipop. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the best part of that was East Palo Alto was 80% black, and I was the first Republican to carry East Palo Alto. And in reality, the brothers down there tell me they thought McCloskey was black. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> On the Will and Willie Show, well, Pete McCloskey is our guest. We're going to do a little Q&A. I'm, I'm hitting it. And we have our first uh, question for Will and Willie and Pete. Hi. Uh, your name? Uh, my name is Holly Howard, and I um, uh, first met Willie oh, about uh, 30 years ago, and uh, it was Jerry Brown's birthday party, and I don't know if you remember that. It was at the... Um, Firehouse restaurant in Sacramento, and uh, it was anyway. Uh, it was a very nice affair, 
and not that kind of affair, but the, <laughs> the party, yes. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, in honor of Earth Day. Um, I was uh, wondering what you guys are thinking. You know, there's a lot of changes going on uh, uh, as far as uh, fracking and talk about fracking in California. And I just w was wondering if you had any thoughts on it. I'll turn that question over to my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, uh, we don't know what fracking, we don't know uh, the, uh, what happens, we don't know, we don't know enough, and I, I don't think, to, to actually uh, let everybody frack, frack away, because they're going to frack California, and I don't think California should be fracked. Fortunately, they have not yet actually started fracking California. Oh, so but the they're state. fracking other states. They are fracking other states, particularly those areas that you were originally indigenous oh, to. Oh, yeah, they're fracking Wisconsin. Yeah. And in some cases, uh, even Democrats, uh, so-called liberal, progressive Democratic governors are being the advocates or for that method of squeezing rocks in order to produce uh, energy, right. so to speak, in don't pursuit enough, of trying to make America energy independent of the rest of the world except that what they are squeezing out is fossil fuel. And y you really ought to be about what Tesla is, and that is you ought to be about making energy. Elon Musk, yeah. That, that it, making energy that makes Pete McCloskey proud. Well, I don't know enough, but my wife's against it, and I vote where I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Pete McCloskey, you're involved with uh, a, a court case that's moving through the U.S. Court of Appeals right now. Uh, that is looking to create uh, a recognition of a constitutional right to healthy atmosphere and safe climate? Well, my what firm is, is it's, a, it's a funny thing. The Justinian Code, you know, 300 years after Christ, the Justinian Code says every government, local, state, federal, has a duty to hold in trust for the children clean air and clean water. And so we're bringing that lawsuit to impose a trust on government to reduce CO2 emissions, 6% a year. Local, state, and federal. We've won a couple, but the big ones, we're looking, <laughs> we're not expecting a whole lot from the Supreme Court. And did you see the recent IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change out of the UN? They, they pretty much give it up, uh, stopping climate change. And now the, the whole new strategy is learning to live with climate change. So it's kind of like... Uh, glad I live on a hill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the, only, the only thing you can say, it's worse in China than it is here. Oh, yeah. We threw through, flew through that Beijing airport. You couldn't see a plane 100 yards away. 80% wow. of their, their air is going to come over here. Polluted. Uh, let's hope uh, that is not the case. You know, I've been there uh, seven or eight times. Uh, in the last uh, uh, few years. As a matter of fact, I'm almost Chinese without speaking Chinese. And I gotta tell you that it is absolutely amazing. Almost on a casual basis, people are walking around with, with masks. masks on and not thinking that the way to get rid of the mask is to in fact change the nature of the emissions. It's just incredible. And unless we do this globally, I mean, what we do is one thing, but we all share the same atmosphere after all and the same water and, and, the, and the climate, and, and whether it's raining or dry and everything else. My, my favorite uh, bit on this was by George Carlin, who said, uh, you know, save the planet, save the... The planet will be fine. You know, even mm -hmm. when we're gone, the mm -hmm. planet will be fine. It'll heal itself. Yeah, yeah don't worry about the planet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Worry about, worry about our, yeah, yeah, the future. future. Yeah. That was the whole theory of the Endangered Species Act. And when the frog goes, we go. Yeah, yeah bees you know, go. They used to put the canary in the in the coal mine, and when the canary fell over, they knew the air was bad enough. We got to do that. We are the canaries in the coal mine. We have another question. <laughs> you state who you are, and then your question. Uh, Bob Fries, a fan of the panel here, and uh, hadn't planned on asking a question, but given the thrust of the conversation. I'm a vice chair of the World Watch Institute in Washington, D.C., and uh, which some of you know has been a major force for 30-some years in climate and environmental matters. And I believe at this time, and it's the first time I'd be able to say this this year, given advances in uh, energy storage, battery storage, solar, to lesser degree wind, I think we got a shot in California 
to come to a point where we could actually get to be a, a model internationally, who would you go to at the uh, state level to uh, try to carry something through the legislature? I, well, with the advent of term limits, you no longer have a central party to whom you could go. Years ago, you could go to Jess Unra, or you could go to Leo McCarthy, or you could go to uh, people like David Roberti. You could go to people who were uh, John Burton, who was president pro tem of the Senate, but you don't have that anymore. There, there is no single personality that carries with them the weight of a sufficient number of votes. So you really do have to work the entire legislative body, period, in both houses. If there's one power left in the state, it's uh, probably Jerry Brown. Uh, and then again, he is not like what you call an activist exerciser of power. He tends to be uh, more reactive to power unlike some of us who believe that power was only to be exercised. We got a shot. We got a shot, Willie, because my wife, John, and I met at a Jerry Brown fundraiser about 1978 at Bimbo's. Oh. <laughs> wow. He was governor when he was 36. He was governor when he was 72. He'll be governor again when he's 108. Every 36 <laughs> years, Jerry Brown will be governor of California. But he is going to run for president, potentially. No, he's not. Too oh, old. yeah. Against oh, yeah. Hillary? Too well, old. you know, he's uh, not a Hillary person, and uh, he, is, uh, he believes that he has to run for president. He's only done it four times so far. <laughs> <laughs> but in California, it's three strikes and you're out, man. Well, he wants that other side of the bridge to be named after him, so, you know, it's going to so, be something. So it'll be known as the Brown Bridge, and it depends on what side you're on. <laughs> if it's no, 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 the no, Willie no. Brown or the Jerry Brown. M my bridge has no <laughs> bolt problems. <laughs> so do, you, do we call your side of the bridge the bridge, since you're the mayor? Uh, no, you call it the Bay Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, you've earned that bridge. I absolutely, I agree with you. I've earned And I think you should get a taste. <laughs> of the bridge? Of the tolls, yeah. No, I think they should move the toll collection yeah, to, to my side. side. <laughs> That's right. That was Bill Cosby's line. You know, the toll, of course they named that side. Him yeah, where Cosby don't said, get money. hey, brother, you got a half bridge. <laughs> <laughs> he was funny as all hell. He was. He was very good on the occasion. Uh, but, you know. That's the way it is. Jerry Brown opposed the bridge being named after me, by the way. Hmm. Why? Did he have a reason? Well, he, well he, you know, there is, there is the custom of naming bridges and roads and, and schools after, uh, shall we say, deceased people? No, no, dead pe people. Dead people, yes. And you are definitely many things, but among them, not dead. And I am... Always potentially an embarrassment. You're right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, I was going to leave that. I, I know. Better you are being very uh, No. <laughs> well, did, he have, did he have a reason? Was it? Was it? No, no, no. He was just out to lunch. He didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and he will pay for it. <laughs> you guys were talking earlier about that KQED. We don't get KQED up where I live on the farm. We get Fox News. Ah. And when that blonde lady got up and said the captain was some ting wong and then spelled it some s-u-m-t-n yeah. ting wong i wanted to give a medal to that 18 year old intern at the national transportation safety board <laughs> who told fox news so they had got that scoop and yeah. made themselves laughing sounds it's an intern too bad called about an intern QED, but fox news had it coming the intern in dc said sounds good to me dude yeah <laughs> holy fuck <laughs> We too low. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> bing, dang, ow. <laughs> I want to thank our live studio audience here at the Without Gold the Dust studio. Lounge at Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. And above all else, you want to thank Pete McCloskey. Yes, for being our guest. 
Thanks to My Source TV. Happy birthday to Laura Rose. Thanks to Michael Butler. Good luck. And uh, the Gold Dust right, crew, nice Gold Dust Lounge. Nice also, to see you. Also, <laughs> of course, our host, Nick Bovis. I want to thank you for listening and watching. You can go to willandwilly.com to see the entire show that has been shot at the Gold Dust Lounge by My Source TV. Again, it's, I'm Paul Wells, Will Durst, Willie Brown, and I'm Willie Brown. Yes. And the Will and Willie Show. Thank you very much. We'll catch you yeah. next time around. All right. Get into it.